I would um, welcome to ICA's second forum on how NGOs are helping fight the COVID virus. We have created this forum of ICA NGOs, partners and members for the exchange of ideas and to share best practices. It's really a meeting place where we can all connect, inspire, learn, and educate each other. For us, it's been an ex amazing experience to see how all of you, our NGOs and partners, have come together to help people in need. It's actually in times like these that one realizes how dependent society is on the work done by non-government agency agencies. In fact, many of you are providing food, masks, health and hygiene products. Many of you are doing a very important task, which is monitoring government efforts to make sure that the resources meant for the rural interior areas actually reach the people who are cut off from the supply chain and really need the attention. Others of you are focused on serving the migrants who are stranded, cut off from their homes in congested urban areas without employment. And there are others who are working with the migrants stranded on the roads in dire conditions. We, the members of Indian Action, applaud your efforts and vow to acknowledge the exemplary work you are doing for mankind. We are doing the best we can here to raise awareness of the needs in India and to raise funds here to help many of you who have written to us for resources. When we last held the forum last month, we had no idea that, that the scourge would continue unabated. But today it is clear that it's far from over and we acknowledge that more needs to be done. I would like you all to use this time to share your learning so that others can benefit from your experiences. We have now researched a lot of what all you are doing and we realize that just listening to what the others are doing will be a learning experience. So before I hand over, I'd like to let you know that ICA NGOs are organizations in India who do not have the clearances required to receive foreign currency. ICA is able to collect the money on their behalf from donors and transfer it to them without cost. And ICA partners are the larger organizations who do have the ability to transfer their own donations, but they do meet our mission of service and we often honor them, work with them, and there's a healthy exchange of ideas with them. Today, you will hear from ICA NGOs and you learn about the work being done by several of our partners as well. I now welcome Anju Sahai, who heads the ICA initiative, ICA Forum initiative. Many of you have already met Anju via email and phone calls. She will now take over and walk you through today's agenda. Anju, welcome. Thank you, Reshma. <clears throat> Thank you, Reshma. Uh, before we, uh, can I request all of you to please uh, rename yourself so that your first name, last name, and your NGO uh, appears because it really helps others also to know. So if you go, if you're not sure how to do it, if you go to the top right corner of your screen, there's a blue box with three little dots and you put your cursor there and then, yeah, that would be great. Thank you. So as Reshma said, this is the ICA forum and she talked about the mission to engage the community of ICA NGOs, partners, and members in a, uh, through webinars to share ideas and best practices. This forum has been using a participatory approach where both the speakers and the attendees have the platform to share their ideas. As the moderator, I am facilitating this interaction. We all know COVID-19 suddenly emerged across countries and populations. ICA executive committee members felt the need to respond quickly to this pandemic. Within four days, we planned and hosted the first webinar, which was held on March 28th. After planning the webinar, we sent an email announcement, which was just 34 hours before the big start of the webinar. Interestingly, there was good attendance and good participation. So we are really excited about that. 
that in that webinar, the recording of that webinar is on ICA's website. And as you may have noticed, this webinar is also being recorded. And within 24 hours, we, we will post it there so that if you want to listen or you want to, others want to listen and uh, about how, what was discussed and uh, they would be most welcome. In the first webinar, we focused on the work being done by Snehale, which is an ICA supported project. And Reshma just shared what we mean by ICA supported projects. Uh, Dr. Girish Kulkarni, who is the founder of Snehale, he talked, told, uh, he told us about the drastic efforts that they have been taking and they can, of course, they continue to take to take care of the, swamp, uh, the slum dwellers, daily wage workers, and the unexpected population of migratory workers. You know, that for everybody, this, this was most unexpected. This pandemic is drastically impacting all of us and the situation is dire. So exactly a week ago, we at ICA executive committee members decided to host the second webinar focusing on COVID-19. We want to hear and spread the stories about the efforts of these nine amazing ICA supported NGO leaders who are fully immersed in taking care of the affected population. On Sunday 12th, we announced this webinar and now we all are here to share and uh, discuss. So this is fabulous. Now first, a few things to keep in mind before we get started more of housekeeping. Please mute your mobile phones and put them on silent mode as that can be distracting to all. I know attendees are already muted, but if others can also do that, that would be good. And when they're not speaking uh, for the speakers who are unmuted, uh, if you can uh, keep yourself muted and then when you have to speak, please uh, unmute yourself. Uh, during this webinar, we have planned four segments. In the first segment, these nine speakers, we uh, had shown the list of them, and of course they are very much here, so appreciate that. These nine speakers will tell us how and what the NGO is doing to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. I may, after each one's presentation, uh, I may ask some clarifying questions. In the second segment, I will ask questions addressed to these speakers to get their views and experience with different aspects of what's going on, uh, all related to COVID, obviously. In the third segment, uh, we, so for the attendees and even for the speakers, if they want to do that, but uh, mostly for the attendees, if you want to ask any questions to any specific speaker or in general, um, or have a comment, or if you want to share, uh, you, you or your NGO or another NGO may be doing something uh, interesting or uh, exemplary innovative work related to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, then please use the chat box. Uh, type it over there. And if you're part of an NGO, please also write the name of your NGO in the beginning. And so actively use the chat box. That's how attendees will participate. And um, ICA team members are track, uh, tracking these, chat, these chats. And then uh, I will, in the third segment, I will be asking those questions to these speakers. And in the last segment, uh, I will share some slides. So when the email announcement went out and the reminder, we asked all the uh, ICA community members that if they have anything to share, you know, if they know an NGO, another NGO, own NGO doing exemplary work, then can they email us a brief description of that? So we've received a good response and we've put them in slides. So we'll share that and uh, what others are also doing. So um, speakers, if you want to uh, answer a question, uh, then please use so some questions, uh, so that's more for a later section where I will be asking questions and then later the attendees through the chat box will be asking questions. So if you want to answer a question, if you go to the participants button at the bottom, you click there and you will see the option to raise your hand. So you can do that and then I, I can, uh, I can call, ask you to uh, please speak. And of course, once you click, a raise hand, it get, then it changes. The option is lower hand, so you can do that. So yes, speakers, please actively use that when uh, uh, the questions are being asked. 
and attendees, please don't raise your hand. <laughs> please use the chat box, okay? I think this will work well. So now let's get started. For this webinar, we have uh, the first speaker is from Arpan Foundation. Prof Mr. Prafal Goswami is the president of Arpan whose mission is to ensure the physical, economic, and social rehabilitation of the disabled, to enable them to regain their mobility and dignity and become self-respecting and productive members of society. Praful ji, please tell us what you are doing for COVID-19. Thank you. I am Praful Goswami from Rajkot, Arpan Foundation. We have lockdown lockdown उसके दूसरे दिन से ही सेवा कार्य करने का शुरू कर दिया है लॉकडाउन के दरमियान हॉस्पिटल में जो लोग दाखिल होते हैं राजकोट सिविल हॉस्पिटल में उनके जो सगे संबंधी हैं करीब 1000 पेशेंट हर रोज दाखिल होते हैं सिविल हॉस्पिटल में और उनके जो सगे संबंधी हैं उनको खाने पीने की कोई व्यवस्था यहां नहीं होती है और लॉकडाउन के हिसाब से उसको कुछ नहीं मिलता तो हमने एक जगह पर रसोई घर शुरू कर दिया और हर रोज 2000 टिफिन वहां तैयार करके हॉस्पिटल पर पहुंचा देते हैं और सब सभी लोगों को लॉकडाउन का पालन नियमों का पालन करते हुए उनको टिफिन पहुंचाया गया दूसरी बात यह है कि राजकोट में कई लोग ऐसे हैं जो बाहर से काम करने आते हैं मजदूर लोग हैं उसको उसके पास खाना भी नहीं है और कोई चीज भी नहीं है रसोई करने की तो उनको भी उनकी जगह पर जाके टिफिन दिया जाता है भारत विकास परिषद सद्भावना उद्दर्शन दो एनजीओ के साथ मिलकर हमने ये काम शुरू कर दिया और पहले दिन से हर रोज दोनों टाइम मिलाकर एवरेज 2200 टिफिन तैयार करके जिन जिन लोगों के घर में राशन नहीं है उन लोगों के लिए हमने किया है और उसमें कम से कम 8 10 दिन तक चलने वाला आटा तेल सब्जी चाय शुगर ये सब मिलाकर 800 से 900 रुपये की एक किट बनती है ऐसी 450 किट तैयार की और जो जिनको जरूरत है उनके घर जाकर हमने ये प्रोवाइड कर दी इनके लिए हमें कलेक्टर्स के पास से हमें मंजूरी दी गई है बाहर जाने के लिए पास दिए गए हैं और ये टिफिन लेने और वहां भेजने के लिए पुलिस ने हमें हमको मदद की है वो आके हमारे रसोई घर पर आके टिफिन ले जाती है अभी पहले तो हम जाते थे और सब टिफिन बेचते थे लेकिन अभी ये कोविड का प्रभाव बढ़ गया है तो इनके हिसाब से वो हमारे रसोई घर पर आकर टिफिन ले जाते हैं अपनी गाड़ी में और हॉस्पिटल पर बेच देते हैं तो इस तरह अभी तक 48 से 50000 लोगों को टिफिन सेवा हमने दे, दे दी है और सबको खाना दिया है बाकी हमें ये हमारा अगला प्लान जब तक ये लॉकडाउन है तब तक टिफिन सेवा चालू करने की इच्छा है और पुलिस और कलेक्टर राजकोट मामलतदार राजकोट वो भी हमें ये सेवा शुरू रखने का बोलते हैं अगले समय में जो जो एरिया में कर्फ्यू हुआ है उसमें सभी को एक ही जगह पर रखते हैं तो वहां खाना पहुंचाना बहुत जरूरी है वहां कम से कम 5 से 10000 टिफिन की जरूरत पड़ती है राजकोट में हर रोज कम से कम 25 से 30000 लोगों को टिफिन सेवा देनी पड़ती है तो ये हमारी इच्छा ऐसी है कि कम से कम 5-6000 लोगों को हम टिफिन पहुंचा सके ऐसी हमारी इच्छा है असु का काम बहुत बढ़िया है थैंक यू सो मच आपने बताया ये रियली uh, really, जो uh, बीमार है उनकी फैमिली वालों की आप लोग देखभाल कर रहे हैं जो गरीब लोग हैं उनकी देखभाल कर रहे हैं और आपने कहा आप कंटिन्यू करेंगे तो एक बात हम यह पूछना चाहते थे आपसे कि इस काम के लिए बिकॉज़ आपके नंबर्स बहुत बड़े हैं आप बहुत डिफेंस पहुंचा रहे हैं तो क्या आपका अपने स्टाफ कर रहा है अर्पण का के वॉलंटियर्स हैं कौन-कौन पहुंचा रहा है हां 
इसमें जो रसोई बनती है वो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बेस पर हमने दी है स्टाफ को वो दस रुपये में टिफिन पूरा बना देते हैं रसोई और पैकिंग भी कर देते हैं दूसरी बात हमारे साथ भारत विकास और दूसरे वॉलंटियर हैं उनको गवर्नमेंट की ओर से पास दिए गए तो कोई लोग सौ टिफिन ले जाता है कोई दो सौ टिफिन ले जाता है और अपने एरिया में जाके जिनको जरूरत है उनको वो वॉलंटियर पहुंचा देते हैं और सिविल जहां तक सिविल हॉस्पिटल का प्रश्न है तो पहले हमारे वॉलंटियर्स जाते हैं अब भी एक एक या दो वॉलंटियर्स साथ में जाते हैं और पुलिस को वहां टिफिन पहुंचा देते हैं और वहां से वो टिफिन सबको बेच देते हैं ऐसी व्यवस्था है बहुत बढ़िया और अभी आगे बाद में और क्वेश्चंस पूछेंगे तो फिर और हम लोग सबको जानकारी होगी थैंक यू सो मच सो बिफोर मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट स्पीकर आई फॉरगॉट टू से समथिंग कि कैन और इच स्पीकर प्लीज प्लान टू स्पेंड अबाउट थ्री टू फोर मिनट्स इन शेयरिंग जस्ट नाउ लेटर ऑन वील हैव मोर अपॉर्चुनिटी टू शेयर यू नो सो दैट वी कैन कवर द डिफरेंट सेगमेंट्स वेल थैंक यू Our next speaker is from Goonj. Mr. Anshu Gupta is the founder of Goonj, which was formed in 1999 with the mission to address the most most basic but ignored need of clothing, and the multifaceted role it plays in villages across India. Goonj has taken on taken on diverse issues like roads, water, environment, education, health, etc., in some of the most backward and remote pockets of India. Anshu, I'm sorry for interrupting. I I introduced you, but I let me just sum up what Praful Ji said in India in Hindi, because uh, uh, some people may not be following it uh, the Hindi language. So what Praful Ji said is uh, they're two, they are doing two main things. One is the patients. There are about thousand patients at the hospital, and the family members are there, staying there. Uh, there. So uh, they have made arrangements. uh where uh, someone is preparing the tiffin with uh, healthy meals and they are being delivered to the families there the other thing is they pr- uh, have putting together packets of food grains and other necessities and which are being delivered to the poor people they have the support of the government local government and actually uh, they help them uh, reach uh, the homes of these poor people so this is really interesting and noble work that's being done thank you yeah sorry uh, anshu yeah if you can please share with us that would be great you are muted anshu you are muted go away anshu you are muted hang on hang on yeah yeah hi please hi. start now so uh, basically you know i don't know if uh, as you know that uh, goonj is uh, otherwise has its footprint in about say 25 states in union territories of india uh, otherwise also without uh, disaster and we are a force of about 1000 plus people and and very big network of large number of ngos and community based organizations and all and our hardcore strength has been really dealing with the different kind of material uh, uh, and also building those these communities so so what I, what what we have done in the last two decades is literally like laying a pipeline or a grid in the country uh till date it was only used for a particular state or something when a disaster used to happen and this is first time when we when we saw at least in our lifetime the pan india disaster it's a global disaster but if i talk uh, talk in indian context suddenly this grid has been really really very very useful for us and uh, the most unfortunate part uh, of this disaster which uh, which the large number of people are not understanding uh, because everyone saw the hunger immediately everyone saw those uh, you know very very troublesome very painful pictures of lakhs of people walking on the roads you know in the in the very desperate situation so the suddenly the entire focus has become the providing food to the food to the food to the people who are stuck and i am i am so thankful to the to be honest one of the most discarded community in this country which is called the ngos and and their well wishers to really come up today today if all these all these people are really surviving Uh, i would say that the larger credit goes to the ngo community when i say ngo community not only the ngos but the but the people around them who have been a part of it i mean the way these guys have taken risk the way these guys are working tirelessly that is the reason people are able to survive right now uh, so two parts 
one is extremely important to take care of the immediate hunger part you know for the migrant laborers for the largely the jobless people it's not about just the migration but it's about the acute huge jobless joblessness because large part of india is actually a daily wager let's understand if you see the data also most of india really survives on any kind of daily wager job right from the tea gardens for assam to the to the sex worker in uh, in west bengal or the devdasi in karnataka or a brick maker in in maharashtra all these people are daily wagers yeah. there is huge impact on that and then the larger impact is actually the villages of india where we are not understanding that all these people who have migrated have gone back to the village in india what we have done just in a couple of lines in the last uh, few weeks uh, two weeks uh, we are already working in uh, now this particular covid relief and all is started in 18 states uh, using the network we are already working with about 88 partners uh, till yesterday and this will grow more every day uh, idea is not only to provide uh, daily uh, you know cooked food but largely to work more on the ration kit the sanitation kit if needed we also provide utensils to the migrated community so that they can actually start cooking on the side of a road so that's the comprehensive approach we are talk- and we are also using our facilities to make uh, cloth mask i think yesterday we had done about 20000 mask now this mask making is becoming a village thing uh, in next week when we you come with the report you will find that hundreds of these villages we are trying to see that how women get employed and and a village makes start making mask for itself so it becomes an employment and it also becomes local distribution plus we are making large number of sanitary napkins and trying to work with the existing network and the new institutions uh, so that it spreads in nutshell this is what we tried to do thank you i'm sorry a great work on you thank thank you for sharing it and now i would like to introduce a speaker from bhumika miss uh, aruna subramaniam is the managing trustee bhumika's mission is to care for the vulnerable through education and activity activities focus on focusing on disaster relief rehabilitation preparedness and mitigation aruna ji please go ahead hi <clears throat> hi anju thanks for having me over and okay. thanks to the absolutely team. thanks for the entire team of ica for doing this and the previous speaker uh, anshu from gunj you know him pretty well we have worked with him earlier uh, our founder trustee jendra and one of our advisors lata they have they have worked with him in uh, many disasters supporting him with uh, vessel kits and uh, rations for the northern part where we don't have a presence and eastern and northern parts we have supported them so that's on the side but yeah coming back to like let me keep it brief so like in any disaster we started with uh, three things first we uh, started a helpline a senior citizen help helpline which started uh, helping citizens senior citizens living alone to procure uh, their groceries and vegetables and medicines taking them to the hospitals for their dialysis and so on so we sent, set up a large team of volunteers who were operating as a call center and coordinating this effort we this is always a part of our first effort in any kind of a crisis or a disaster this is setting up a helpline uh, which we did in kerala and which we did during chennai floods now and this ex- helpline has now extended to the next district tiruvallur district also where we are doing the same thing through a call center the second part of it of course is the immediate relief in terms of food uh, and uh, ration kits so we started in a pretty organized way where uh, we we of course like most others it's it's sometimes easy to work with government which has the data so we focused on one district tiruvallur district and uh, through them we got the entire list of migrants there and uh, divided it uh, into multiple zones and we created these ration kits uh, for families which would last for uh, a minimum of 12 days and uh, it was packed it was packed right there in that district and we have uh, now um, we distributed about 4000 impacting over 16000 migrants over there that uh, the, the, again there we were very careful the migrants who were working in larger companies we uh, went back and got the companies to support them and we did not do that but those who were working in like anshu was saying the brick uh, manufacturers all these cottage industries were they were not able to 
pay these people or they were not able to support them with grain those were the ones that we picked up and we did that and within chennai itself we have reached over 3000 ration kits impacting over 9000 to 10000 people here so that has been a primary uh, focus of our uh, activity uh, this uh, distribution of ration kits we are identifying uh, uh, communities and uh, in most places where they are they are not necessarily in clusters which is a big challenge i mean you find them living in the middle of the rest of uh, of the communities which actually have a ration card and which has access to government benefits of uh, money as well as ration so it's a very laborious and uh, painstaking job but we are reaching to everybody who whom we are identifying who call on our helpline we score the road, uh, social media to pick up these cases and then all the calls that come to the uh, central helpline to the government all those come to us also so we've been reaching across and uh, i feel that between 25 to 30000 migrants we would have impacted by now but we are getting our statistics in on that the other, the other thing that we have started doing is uh, supplying of food to the uh, government has set up over 56 i mean the number is something like uh, 70 to 80 relief centers so we are uh, working with uh, a few relief centers where we have started uh, giving daily lunches and dinners now right now it is about 5000 but i think in the next 2 or 3 days it will start scaling up the the next activity that we are doing is we have procured uh, the um, n95 masks and then the ppe kits uh, we had the government permission to open up uh, units where uh, these were customized and uh, these were shown to the doctors for uh, for uh, approval and uh, these have been created and uh, we have, we have uh, also uh, opened up a unit to design our own uh, this plastic shield mask we procured plastic in bulk and those are getting manufactured and we are getting literally 4000 5000 done a day this is being distributed to the hospitals as well as the police uh, in the tamil nadu states we are taking them uh, like uh, district by district right now so can i ask you a question and i know you have to leave uh, so uh, uh, this thing so uh, and that uh, all of you have a tremendous number of volunteers doing what needs to be done how are these volunteers getting sick how are you, and how are you educating these volunteers and how are you tracking you know how uh, the care for the volunteers themselves you yeah. know i mean one thing is sick the other thing is fatigue them taking care of their own families yeah yeah that's a good question so uh, the, the first thing that we did was to call out for volunteers and bhumika itself has its own base of uh, Uh, volunteers uh, who have worked with us during the chennai floods to the, during the kerala rains so that is one uh, uh, list that we already have in addition to that we had called for volunteers and there is a team that checks with the volunteers for certain vulnerabilities we rule out people who have young children at home who have senior citizens at home and we check for certain comorbidities like do they have diabetes do they have blood pressure so that gives us one working list uh, initially now once we have that list we provide them of course with the face masks and uh, even in the packing stations we provide them with the uh, gloves and all that and they are initiated into a process as to even like when we go and deliver we encourage them to leave the kits on the floor and maintain the social distance and let allow them to pick it up so these are things that we are constantly educating them but at times uh, you know that these they when these things see every time we encourage them to take a picture and send and then we, when we see it's not working we go back and educate them again so that's something that we've been actively doing right through uh, anju another thing uh, is about donations so you need donations for this thing how is that happening and uh, have you received any uh, yeah. support in in kind and uh, um, donations from unexpected source any stories you can share yeah yeah i i think you know it's always like uh, and it will be the experience of many people that they, you always have the friends of the trust who believe in you you know they are the individuals who believe in you and literally wait for you to start your first activity and don't donate elsewhere they keep sending you messages tell me what you're going to do those friends are the first ones always and uh, we have uh, uh, an amount of money that we call a crisis fund that we deploy we, because we know that that is the amount that we will always be able to get from certain sets of uh, people that donate to us apart from that uh, we we have always worked with some companies for csr funds and uh, there there are foundations now that are looking for credible partners 
so we write to them and yes we have got i would say that we have been able to raise uh, the initial budget of uh, or the estimate that we thought that we were going to work towards that because ours is uh, in terms of uh, of money it is a uh, it is a little bit expensive the ration kits are expensive the medical is that expensive we would have covered about 35% fundraise uh, with what we have uh, already budgeted i think thank you so much for sharing really appreciate it and uh, if you are welcome to stay as long as i know you have some commitment but this yeah. this is really helpful Thank yeah I, i'm go i'm i'm just going to hold my phone next to me and if i get called away i will just and i'll keep rejoining yeah and if you can mute yourself that yeah of course 100% yeah thank you thanks yeah thank you now let me introduce the speaker from lok biradri prakalp dr anagha amte uh, she is a gynecologist while being part of baba amte's family anagha stands tall in her own impressive achievements lok biradri prakal believes in working as a catalyst for sustainable change within the community through healthcare education environmental and environmental awareness so before i invite anagha you know uh, there was some voice we are recording the session so people if you can please mute your lines that is great anagha uh somebody's yeah i think yeah somebody's thank you for okay hi anega all yours hi uh yeah thank you for inviting me it has been an interesting session listening to what other ngos are doing all inspiring work so uh there are few things which we are doing i would like to share them with you uh mm -hmm. firstly we are creating awareness though there have been no cases reported in our area but students who have been studying in the cities the uh, workers from telangana and chhattisgarh who are coming here for season of plucking bidi patta leaves so these people pose the threat of carrying the corona virus and most of the government announcements awareness initiatives are in marathi or hindi which are not understood by the tribal people from remote areas so we have uh, we recorded a message in the uh, local language madia telugu and gondi and we uh, went to each of the villages in bamdagar tehsil and since we have been doing this since 24th of march and broadcasted uh, the uh, message in the village we also informed them about hand washing social distancing and need for quarantine we have been working with uh, regarding this with the government we have shared our message with the government and government is carrying it further we have also uh, recorded a video message about how to wash hands and this has been circulated via bluetooth amongst the youth who have who do have mobile phone and they can use it secondly uh, the government has not been able to provide the ppe the protection kits in this area so we do have face masks and n95 masks but no face shield to available so with the help of uh, uh the lamination sheet we design a uh, face shield uh, for our health workers then the government officials the police and the uh, hospitals they said they don't have so we have provided them also with the face shield and our volunteers and social health uh, uh, the health self help group women are stitching masks for the uh, police and other government uh, officials so they can use and protect themselves when they come in contact with the suspected cases uh thirdly due to lockdown and all the importance is being focused on only on corona in areas like ours malaria and such illnesses are also quite fatal so we have our six community health centers in remote areas we have stocked them with all the uh, possible uh, medicines and we have also trained our health workers to identify the corona virus and take care of all the other uh, illnesses also and when these patients visit this health centers our health workers also tell them about social distancing hand washing how to take care uh, while sneezing and coughing so that no disease is spread not only corona lastly uh, not lastly but since it's a lockdown and in the villages though it's not like in cities everybody is sitting in the house in the villages people are moving around going to the uh, uh, pump to collect water going to the forest to collect firewood so the chances of teenage pregnancy is high so we have uh, made a video appropriate video about using of barrier contraception 
and we are circulating it amongst the youth and also we have uh, kept a stock of condoms in our health center so people can come and use and prevent this uh, transmission of sexual transmitted diseases or of teenage pregnancy thank you there's somebody's asked this question so let me ask you uh, how much does it cost per day for each ngo can you give an approximate cost uh, i'm sorry uh, because we have so many things going on i won't Absolutely. be able to tell you exactly i i can i can i'm from uh, yes. ho yeah hi i'm dr nilama sabarwal Oh hi. Can, oh hi! So right, okay. We'll have a, a time later on. We, could okay. you please, yeah, if you can uh, uh, post your question or your comment through the chat box, we'll share okay. it. There, okay? okay. And if okay. you can mute your line, that, that would be great. The session is being recorded. Thank you. Thank you, Anaga. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next speaker is from Bhagini Nivedita Gramin Vigyan Niketan or BN VGN. Nilima Mishra is the founder of this NGO, whose mission is to empower villages to have the capacity to provide means to livelihood and have a self-sustaining ecosystem. It empowers villages by providing opportunities for people to live with dignity. Nilima ji, please. Yeah, yeah. You can take. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I think the problem is common, uh, basically, for uh, people who are dependent on daily wages. So we. First of all, we form a committee uh, from the village and uh, Excuse me, Nilamaji, one minute. Please, uh, uh, please, uh, background yes, awaaz aari hai. Can, can you mute, mute our lines, please, everyone? Nilamaji, can you speak a little louder, if it's possible? Yes, yes, and yes. others, please, yes. Uh, yeah, this is perfect. And others, okay, please, okay. keep your lines muted. Thank okay, you. Okay, okay, thank you. So uh, we try to uh, identify the problems and also the people who are really needy. So we form a committee from the village and uh, they search, they go and visit their home and uh, nearby 2000 families are there who need the help. So we started providing the ration groceries, which cost 850 rupees uh, per family. And uh, also uh, we did uh, uh, like uh, there are farmers like uh, who's uh, jinki sabjiya abhi kheto mein hai abhi wo utha nahi sakte they have invested for seed fertilizer everything so we identified that also and uh, we approached people like who, who are from village now who are staying in mumbai pune so we started approaching them to for the support uh, for uh, we also approached aika lerzim foundation uh, caring friends and all and uh, they have supported so we are making this uh, uh, mask um, manufacturing 25,000 masks and also getting orders from other uh, organizations so women are getting uh, employment and uh, we have uh, we talked to BDO that is block development officer Taisildar police party we are taking their uh, permission their uh, help to for the logistic and all uh, we have talked to wholesalers so that they can provide us the bulk uh, groceries um, like we have we have supplied to 850 families the ration now rest are remaining uh, so we are purchasing the pickle from farmers uh, so that they can earn and uh, we are making lemon pickle uh, pickle of lemon and supplying to families and uh, yes this way we, we are working yes Thank you so much, Neela Maji. Thank Very you interesting so work going on. Our next speaker is from HelpAge India. Ms. Madhu Madan is the country head for resource mobilization. HelpAge India's mission is to work for the cause and care of disadvantaged older people and to improve their quality of life. So, Madhu Ji, we would love to Thank hear from you. you. Uh, so, you know, HelpAge, because we are basically focused on the elderly, 
and also because we have uh, almost 60% of the work we do is focused on the health. So when this COVID crisis actually, even before it became a crisis, when we started reading about it and you know we saw what was happening in other countries, what we did is that we have a very large fleet of mobile medical units, almost 160 of them across 24 states, uh, covering almost 175 districts. Uh, so immediately our medical staff began reaching out to elderly and their family. We prepared uh, you know, awareness material uh, in terms of you know what the symptoms are, what is the response, how to wash hands. Uh, so all the uh, protocols as per the WHO for better hand hygiene and sanitation, we started doing that immediately. And this work started actually uh, almost at the beginning of March, I would say. And then we also started reaching out to corporates uh, and CFR people whom we work with uh, to start uh, if they could uh, donate some hygiene kits or support us for that. And initially these hygiene kits had soap, sanitizers and a mask, you know. Uh, so that is what the initial efforts were. And we were focusing basically on the... Uh, hygiene part of the coronavirus. We also had our helplines, uh, which started reaching out through SCAs, through the uh, people we do. And we've done actually almost about, uh, I think about 85,000 calls, um, 21,000 calls so far with an 85% closure rate. So the helplines moved into action immediately. But what really, uh, where the crisis that came in was all post the lockdown because once the lockdown was an, uh, announced, it was very sudden, very unexpected, and it happened leaving a lot of people stranded. So we saw a lot of distress, and therefore, you know, HelpAge having been very proactive in almost every disaster that has been there, we have always been at the forefront. So immediately we were, you know, we swung into action on 30th March itself. We were also invited to be part of the civil society consultation, which was organized by the Niti Aayog to understand the challenges. And we started to assist and support the local administrations in providing food to the poor migrants and the daily wage laborers, including elderly in urban slums. And also we realized that a lot of people who were in the rural areas with their children, you know, either stranded or not able to send them money because uh, they did not have the uh, money anymore. We started uh, working even wherever we could in the rural areas. So while the mobile medical units had to stand down because of the lockdown, the uh, state um, head started working and receiving permissions from the authorities of trying to assist them. And we started helping out in terms of, you know, maybe taking some patients who needed help or if they needed telemedicine, etc. So that was the kind of work we did. And today, uh, to date, we have in, uh, distributed about 100,000 cooked meals to the poor and needy in the slums and bastis of uh, Delhi, Noida, Gurgaon, Jammu, Hyderabad, Bangalore, etc. We've also received permission now to work in other areas and slowly we are working and getting permissions with the authorities. 70% of our mobile uh, medical fleet is now available with the um, authorities to help them. So we are even taking patients for dialysis. In some cases, they are being used to distribute dry ration. And so as we were doing this food distribution and the cooked meals, which we were supported by some donors, uh, we started, we were hearing a lot of pleas for dry rations. And so we have put together a one month survival package which is basically some dry rations, as well as what we call a Corona protection, where there's bathing soap, there's washing soap, and there are uh, masks. And this is to support a family of five, uh, to uh, tide them over till they are able to get help from the PDS system, which is quite patchy. And this has got, you know, dal or atta, depending on the area, some dals, and basically spices, cooking um, uh, oil and uh, sugar, and... Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the detergents and all that I mentioned. So um, this is something that we have been doing. Now, getting permissions has been difficult, but we have been using all our programmatic uh, presence in all the locations. So as you know, HelpAge India, we are working in 24 states and in, um, you know, almost 2000 villages 
of India. So what we are doing is we are using our presence and footprint on the ground and the networks that we have built up over the years of dealing in disasters. So even while there have been restrictions, we have approached the, uh, the governments for requisite permissions and we are working even in Delhi, for example, or in any of the places, our own staff members are working as volunteers. When we go to do distribution, we work with people who are there on the ground. We go and contact communities. We find out where the need is and then we bring in some volunteers so that we ensure, uh, of course, it's not di uh, very easy because, you know, when I interrupt you, please. So, yes. yeah, sorry, I'm just keeping track of the, the time because we have, the, but you have shared a lot of very good information. <clears throat> and in later questions, you know, more information will come out and, and uh, it, stuff that people specifically want to ask. So that is really nice. Thank you so much. I think that's about what I have to say. Anyway. No, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. Now, this speaker is from Mountain Children's Fund, or MCF. Ms. Aditi Kaur is the founder of MCF, whose mission is to empower children through knowledge, training, and the power of collective action to change the community, communities from the ground up. So, Aditi, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Hi, good morning and namaste to everyone. Um, I'm an Aditi from the Mountain Children's Foundation. So, as everyone has said, uh, the COVID-19 has been quite an exercise for all of us because as social organizations, we have to go out and meet people. And, you know, it's the social distancing or the physical distancing has been the most uh, distressing fact of this uh, entire uh, mm -hmm. uh, problem. So how we started off was uh, a, a reaction by our child team. Uh, had to go immediately for emergency uh, classes for a team of about seven or eight of us. Because no movement is allowed in Uttarakhand right now. It's very difficult if you want to move anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the uh, uh, Childline team is reaching out. Our MCF Childline team is reaching out to people who require ration. But we're making sure, because the government is already doing it. So we're making sure that it's the people who fall between the slats. Those who are not able to get the ration from, say, government programs or from NGOs and are being left out. So we go to the police and through the police system, make sure that these people have not been given ration so that there's no hoarding that's happening. It's, there's this huge issue of hoarding that happens. So on one side, we are doing that. On the other side, in our villages, we are reaching out to the Pradhans and other people and asking them to provide support for these families who do not have that kind of support. And um, because our entire work is with children, We've also decided, we also have reached out to the children. So my team members have spoken to all the children that they interact with as many as they can on the phone. Because again, this is a whole learn, new learning curve. We interact with people, we talk with people, we talk to children in big groups and things like that. This one-to-one -one on the phone hasn't really happened. So we've been interacting with children and what we have come up with is to do an online drawing competition. It's a kind of... Uh, for mental health, it will help the children also be part of something that's different on you and they will not uh, be in on their uh, reality of being stuck at home. So this just gives them an opportunity to express what they're doing and feeling. And for our team, we've also had this little video. They all have made a video and sent it in as to how they're feeling and things like that, just to feel connected and be feeling uh, that they're together and with one. So it's been very, um, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm, I, and we've not been as huge as HelpAge or Goonj or anything. We're just working in our small 50 village um, area and not more than that because we don't want to step on uh, and increase uh, work where already work is happening just to build the patchwork of support that's happening. What I feel is going to be important is after the lockdown, there's going to be need for building up the social fabric that is slowly tearing yeah. uh, in India, uh, specifically also in Dehradun. And uh, that is what I'm particularly concerned about right now, because it's an emergency, everyone is out there to help. Everyone's making sure um, that everyone's getting food more or less. Uh, that is not such a huge problem, though we get calls. In fact, I was missing today because it was just a call on our helpline asking for rations and things like that. Um, so we are reaching out, we are going through the police, but what is going to happen after um, the lockdown is 
open, what is going to happen to our social fabric, uh, the need to go on to talk about sanitation and hygiene. We, of course, as MCF have always talked about sanitation, hygiene, how to wash your hands. Uh, in fact, in March, before all of this started, when we were talking about COVID coming in and we went out to our kids and explained to them why it was important, what was the way uh, that they had to wash, how long did they have to wash hands for, and why they should go and talk to their parents about it. So we were kind of before uh, that, and uh, Dehradun hasn't had too many cases. We're at 20 right now, two today. So it, the graph is going up, but in Uttarakhand, uh, we've been kind of in control. There are about now 40 cases, I think. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Aditi. I'm not sure. I think your screen just froze. So, but thank you so much. And now we have a speaker from Borderless World Foundation or BWF. Mr. Adhik Kadam is the co-founder and the mission of VWF is to work in Jammu and Kashmir. They have rescued hundreds of girls orphaned in the conflict along the India-Pakistan border. BWF strives towards a vision of one great human family through a variety of activities, providing love, support, healthcare, and education to help the orphaned girls grow into a generation of peacemakers. You know, I, think, I am sorry, just a minute, may I have one minute. So for those of you who joined late, you uh, probably missed the instructions that please use the chat box to ask questions. And also in the chat box, somebody, uh, at least one person has asked me a question privately. I'm sorry, I'm doing this moderation, so I won't be able to answer. So please ask if, uh, to others, don't ask me because I won't be able to respond. Sorry about that, Adhik. Yes, please tell yeah. us. Uh, so I'll just uh, uh, give a little idea about, uh, uh, since we are working in Jammu and Kashmir state, so it's a independent, uh, now it's a union territory. <laughs> Uh, so mostly in the summer time, uh, people are uh, in in Kashmir, but mostly in winter time they travel uh, in different. Many ones basically travel different states of India because of winter, hard hard winter, harsh winter. So uh, and normally they started coming back in the March month month of the March. So this is the time uh, March April. They many ones basically coming back from, from different states. The you know, Kashmiri people, the local Kashmiris, and even the laborers. So. Right now, one good thing is that uh, from India, from Bihar or from UP or from other states who are, as workers, you know, uh, who are coming there to work. So now they are not there because because of winter they are already out. So one thing is uh, because of uh, it is uh, because there is no travel. So that is good thing that uh, speed is not there. Uh, that much spread, but uh, mostly Kashmiris uh, go back to uh, different states in winter because. Uh, uh, Kashmir is very very hard hard time uh, six months. So now they came back actually. Already many ones came back and many you know big gatherings in Delhi or in Punjab and different you know your UP some some uh, religious organizations. You know many ones basically came back to Kashmir and that is a reason uh, you know lot of lot of spread actually in Kashmir. So uh, I'm just giving the basic uh, things uh, why you know otherwise why, Kashmir it's a winter many ones don't go out but because of this travel and many ones right now hiding their travel history. So that is the reason you know, we really don't know and a lot, lot, lot of uh, less tests are happening. No, very, very limited tests are happening. So real numbers are not yet come, but right now 300 something odd number is basically the figure is there. So which is like positive cases, but uh, and few just 10 or 12 deaths, but we really don't know the real numbers because uh, tests are really happening less. So what we are doing right now, uh, since last four years, five years, we launched a project, uh, emergency medical services with the Kashmir government, border security force, army. So we are having certain critical trauma care ambulances, which is fully equipped like a, a ICO on wheels. So uh, it is partnered with the uh, Jammu Kashmir government in you know, all, all the departments. So these ambulances are right now in use for this, uh, this uh, uh, situation. Because like in Kashmir, in like a South Kashmir, there are 30 lakh, 35 lakh people and there are only two ventilators right now. Uh, I, I know, uh, that is the situation. So these uh, ambulances are right now, it's, you know, you, you, people are getting help in the situation. And uh, second thing is we are having centers, you know, uh, we are having orphanages uh, in, in Kashmir. So automatically, naturally, we are having the kitchen set up in different uh, districts. 
so we are using that kitchen to serve food to uh, police personnel and hospital people not uh, uh, locals because locals are uh, having their own things and laborers are not yet reached to kashmir so we don't have that laborer problem in kashmir uh, valley right now uh, not much that much actually uh, third thing is a uh, uh, lot of girls who passed out from our homes they are now in different villages like married i don't know many ones are already married also so so we basically charge you know charge them you know that they have to work in their villages so this um, uh, uh, sanitary sanitary napkin uh, distribution then uh, uh, mask distribution making mask all things are already happening you know on on uh, every village small small level small small level already happening uh, ultimately uh, what i feel uh, we have to basically work with a uh, with the government ultimately we have to work with the government because that is the only uh, thing we can uh, we can do and uh, ngos well, we can you know government programs and awareness programs we have to basically make uh, all those program to connect with the people who are unaware about it so this is where we you know right now immediately uh, to to react to to act we are we are all uh, are reacting basically but i think there is a longer uh, thing i think government need to come uh, big players need to come and they have to basically act and we uh, can be become a part of that that thing and we can we can take it this is this is what i we feel because uh jammu kashmir government you know health department they requested like a uh, uh, 4500 ppk to our foundation then ventilators like uh, uh, 100 ventilators they requested so as a ngo we cannot basically provide uh, those things so they have to basically you know if we have to strengthen them we can strengthen them with a small effort but ultimately government has to come uh, and big player, people has to come and they have to take take the thing so from our side i cannot uh, quote a number because numbers can be anything because you know one village our girl who is uh, making mask and sending uh, uh, village to uh, home to home so numbers is a is big number so i don't want to go in a number uh, but the only thing is that uh, in jnk state we are uh, just uh, handling the kitchen part also we are handling the uh, the our uh, girls who are in a different village they are handling uh, individual level they are handling that area that part and uh, uh, our ambulances which is very very you know important part right now working in kashmir because kashmir do you know, just a month back jnk state started critical trauma care ambulance otherwise last 4 5 years our only ambulances was was having there and uh, taking care of the people so this is from uh, from our side in the jnk state thank you so much hello yeah you're on mute anju ji thank you yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much adik thank you so much yeah. uh next speaker is from jan vikas mrs kirti joshi is the program director the mission of jan vikas is to empower facilitate and capacitate and uh, focusing on change agents who empower and serve their communities so kirti ji please share with us thank you so much uh, anju ji and hello everybody uh, yeah i think uh, it's uh, first of all i would like to start uh, saying thank you to aika uh, two way i can relate to the work which you people are doing i was just a citizen back in 18 years in boston i realized how every indian outside india is trying to be with india you know in the time of need and i genuinely appreciate the the efforts and i think this platform is really a great thing where we can share uh, and learn from each other because i think uh, as uh, correctly said you know truth lies in silence you know so do the people if we don't have a right kind of a platform and opportunity to ventilate and share what we are doing as far as janvikas efforts is concerned from the very second day of lockdown 25th march we are working and um, of course hunger was one of the thing where 90% of the india's working population who are into uh, unorganized sector they are having this livelihood insecurity and they were dealing with the hunger as a one of the disaster on top of that now they have another problem and a uh, lot of insecurity about food and other uh, basic essential and everything so we did a rapid need assessment we analyzed the entire situation uh, to decide our response we divided amdavad into four different zone listing out uh, our household and uh, beneficiaries we are other than amdavad we are also operational Uh, into Kutch, into Sabarkatha, into Kheda, Kambhat, Pitlad, uh, also Jambusar, 
in Baruch district. So there are a number of uh, places. Uh, Genvikas, along with other uh, association of ours, uh, Center for Social Justice and everything, we are operational outside Gujarat also into other four states. So together, uh, just to quickly give you the brief about what all we did so far, uh, we started uh, with the provision of a dry ration along with hygiene kit initially uh, and uh, along with that uh, when it comes to migrant workers and homeless uh, we did even provision of uh, food packets because i think considering the ground realities and varying uh, response which we received it's not only some one way of uh, serving people will work but multiple way has to be decided so we started uh, provision of the food this two way one is a provision of the ration uh, as a ration kit and hygiene kit and also food packets then we put a special focus with our safai karmacharis we are jan vikas uh, as a institution we are uh, uh, having collaboration with almost uh, more than 200 uh, cbos and people's organization uh, so we, one of them is Manav Garima, uh, which is only one in Gujarat who works with the Safai Karmachari Union. So providing them safety gears and everything. Our Center for Social Justice, we worked on activating district level legal services and started uh, tracking migrants who were stuck and stranded in a different places and working with the government. Uh, police department and home uh, like home department and other people so that we can help them out and put them in the right place. <laughs> Media, which is a, we are running radio Nazaria uh, through which we reach out to the local communities and giving them the messages you know because uh, people are taken aback they are like don't know what to do where to go for information uh, what's going to happen so we have also designed the monitoring toolkit for uh, public distribution system as well as Pradhan Mandri Garib Kalyan Yojana. We have uh, listed all the state and central government schemes and we have a 1,600 uh, community leaders who are trained so that they can be in touch with the community and get properly. So that was some of the thing we have done initially. Uh, through that, uh, so far we have reached almost uh, 45,000 people uh, across Gujarat. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, we are also looking into uh, lockdown two, and we have started uh, uh, collaboration with uh, Zone 5 DCP in Ahmedabad. So we have chosen almost like 10 to 12 clusters in that Zone 5 where, would, where we are going to, starting today, we would be having self-managed dignity community kitchen where all the migrant workers they will run those kitchen along with the local uh, committee and they are the one who would be also part of uh, all the management. Uh, they will pay one rupee as a token, you know, that nothing is uh, to maintain their dignity and everything and that goes to the local committee. So every day we would be feeding almost 4,500 migrant migrants and homeless uh, twice a day, so two years, 9,000 meals per day. So that is another thing which we have started. Uh, Genvis does have a collaboration with Indian Institute of Public Health. Uh, there are four IITH in India and one of them in Gandhinagar. So with that, we are looking into uh, healthcare training of our 1,600 community workers for COVID-19 and beyond for all communicable disease and everything. So that we are doing. We have 800 paralegal across uh, uh, like four states of India who are working with the government uh, judiciary system and other uh, district level authority to facilitate the problem. Uh, you know. I think uh, we lost the audio yeah. further, but uh, again, these uh, all nine of you are doing just such amazing work, overlapping work, different work, just touching different sectors and uh, in different ways. So really hats off to you. I, in this segment, the next segment, what I want to do is I'm going, I'm going to ask questions. And I, earlier I did suggest, you know, that please use the participant. If you click the participant button, you can raise your hand, but I'm thinking with so many participants, uh, it will be difficult for me to just go down the list and see those hands. So I'm just going to ask <laughs> direct the uh, for each question, I have a few questions. Each question, I'm going to uh, ask two, three people to give their viewpoints. So uh, my first question is, 
Let's talk about donations. Can you suggest some strategies which have worked well for you to raise funds from your donors? And can you propose strategies which may work well, which haven't been used, but some ideas you have? So how about we, Anshu, if, can you suggest? Can you share? Um, so I think, you know, uh, again, we need more awareness, uh, uh, more talking to people because unfortunately, if, if I see, if I see us, fine, I can, I can give you an example of Goonj. Every disaster, the money used to be there and the huge amount of material. This disaster, unfortunately, a lot and lot of institutions are not getting the money, the kind of money they should get instead of, instead of institution, more money is going to the government programs, which, you know, uh, and, and ultimately the, the problem as of now solved is solved by the last mile organization who are, who are feeding people literally. So there is a huge gap. Plus this entire CSR money also, a lot of CSR money is gone to the government account. Unfortunately, a lot of them come back to us and say that we want to work in Karnataka or Maharashtra or Gujarat, right? No one is, no one is thinking about those millions of people who have gone back to the states of MP, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, you know, Rajasthan, then Bihar, Odisha, West Bengal and all. So I think if we want to raise money, more important for us is to do uh, spread the correct information and tell people that it is not a disaster which has happened. A call over and now the recovery is started. It is, it is a disaster which is still unfolding. You know, I think all those things we really need to do. So as, as institution and as, as a person from the sector, I am spending more time in spreading that awareness. I'm also advocating, uh, you know, that it's extremely important not to just give to a one particular organization and all, but stand with the, with the, the people, institution, a smaller organization in the country, trust, you know, build that trust. Don't ask for all kind of useless, nasty data, uh, you know, a TikTok, TikTok video, a picture with the so-called victim, the normal mindset, you know, which unfortunately happens. You stand with these smaller institutions, uh, grassroots institution, because they are the people who are, who are delivering it. And they are the people who are in touch with the community. So that correct information, that information on, on the rural distress, the ultimate destiny of the migrant people, where they're going, no one is migrating towards cities. Everyone is migrating to the, to the village India. I think that that discussion is extremely important. Instead of just talking about our own work, our own institution, Let's talk about the, about the larger picture and, and stand with each other as institutions. That's the most important. And also remove these words like donor beneficiary fine. I mean, right now, just one thing I have to say in Hindi ki isne is disaster ne sabko ghutno pe ghada kar diya hai. No, I mean, it is, all of us are on our knees, the yeah. presidents and the, and the last men. So let's just work together as a stakeholder instead of donor beneficiary and all that thing. That's my Absolutely. comment. On this. No, really appreciate it because this is, we don't even know what's going to be the new normal or how, what's going to happen next. I mean, uh, we all are li living through very, very strange times, if I may say that, you know. So that, that's great, uh, this thing. Uh, Neelima ji, what are your thoughts about this? And I, it's basically, I, I, the question is, can you suggest some strategies which have worked well for you to raise funds from your donors? And can you propose strategies which, which may work well and you haven't used them because you did, I mean, it, it, the circumstances were different, let me, or it wasn't a good fit. So uh, I think when we uh, talk to our uh, uh, donors, regular donors, they have many people to support. Uh, what we did, uh, we approached the village, uh, village people who are staying in Mumbai, Pune, and there are many people around, uh, around our village. So we started approaching them and, and it, it really helped. So I think uh, we should go to the, our friend circles, uh, whom we haven't uh, never reached for the donation and all. So we did that. That is yeah, there's another Nilma who keeps speaking. So I'm going to try butter. Excuse me. Can somebody mute this line, please? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think there's a confusion. I'm also but, Nilma. And yes. so I keep oh, okay. No worries. Yeah, no, no worries. So the, the segment is addressed to the, to the speakers. Huh? 
Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, only the speakers. For the yes. connection. So can you mute your line, please, Nilima? Yes. Number one. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, please, yes, you. please. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Something went wrong with the connection and... Uh, in between, I lost it. So my sincere apologies for that. The only thing, bottom line, which I want to tell you right now is life is all about hope and connection. And like through ICA, today we are connected and I hope more and more we work towards helping each other. I think everybody is doing a great job. But uh, all the way up to the last mile delivery, the more we are connected, uh, you know, I think the better the result would be. Thank you so much. And you're most welcome. And uh, you... And that is why we have launched this ICA forum, basically to connect the NGOs, to empower each other, to share. You know, it just generates ideas and looking at things differently and making connections. Why are you not so we plan to do more. But yes, this is the first step. Mm -hmm. So, Kirti ji, would you like to? Is not a Reshma, can you mute yourself, please? Okay. So, uh, Kirti ji, would you? Uh, can you share some strategies which have worked for you in terms of raising funds from donors? What we started is, you know, I think uh, the first thing is to call those people who believe in us and who are already uh, funding us for the current programs. So Bread for the World and then Miss Aurea Germany and then uh, Azim Premji, APPI Foundation. Those people are already connected with Janvikas for a number of years. They know what we are doing for last 37 years. So approaching those people who allowed us to use some reserve from our project fund. So we started with that and then spreading the words, keeping people informed about what we are doing. Also listening to their views, you know, and be considerate because I think uh, if a collaboration is a way to respond to such kind of a disaster, then uh, listening from everybody and making sure that what we are planning and what, what is way, way ahead, you know, that in agreement with everybody. So I think it works well as long as uh, you have uh, some current donors as well as uh, other people like IKEA, we worked with you people back in 2001 during earthquake. And then in between we lost you and we were not that connected. But again, uh, uh, building those connections, you know, making sure, you know, that we are uh, there with each other in the time of need. And I think people are generous also, individual and institutional capacity, as long as they know that uh, what they want to do, that's what we are doing they are also ready to come forward. And sometimes we have to also inform and give them the message, you know, why we are doing what we are doing. If that factor is clear, then people come forward and support. That's what I believe. I totally agree with you. And uh, some, sometimes people are looking where sh they want to do something and where sh which is the right place, which is the right NGO to donate. So I'm not going to take name, but uh, at, uh, Right after our first webinar, there's an attendee who's right here and she's smiling. She emailed right away and said, you know, she really enjoyed this was very meaningful, the webinar hearing and the discussion. And she wants to donate an X amount, which I, which NGO. So, of course, we told her, you know, we didn't suggest specific NGO give her the choices. You know, this, this is what they're doing. She would decide for herself. But, yes, it's, it happened, like you're saying, share so that people get inspired. And, you know, sometimes you need direction, where, where, which is the right thing. But the one last thing, yeah. when it comes to donation, it's not only money, you know. No amount is small, your skill, your ability, your connection, whatever you can share, you know, everything is a contribution. Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's another question. You have ongoing activities to help people who have been badly impacted by this pandemic. Looking back, are there things you wish you had planned or implemented differently to have better responded to the situation? So it hasn't been very long, but at the same time, this is an evolving situation. And, you know, it's like, oh, if I had done this, then, you know, we could have done it. So just some ideas of like that. So, um, can I ask, let's go with Arunaji, are you? Because she was. Uh, She's okay. not there. Okay. Uh, Aditi, would you like to respond? Oh, we're actually very grateful that we were working a lot on uh, wash uh, sanitation and hygiene and actually how uh, children have to wash their hands and things. So we were actually, I would have wanted to do much more, but because uh, there's this seasonal change in what donors want to give for, 
uh, wash was beginning to become on the back step and you don't get so much donation for that. But if we continued on something like that, it would have been easier for us to reach out to many more people because of that. So, yeah, the, it would have taken us, uh, it would have been easier for us for our, our many more community members and things like that. It was, we had to remind people that we talked to them. Thank you. Adik, would you like to share? You're on mute right now. Would you like to share, you know, about uh, looking back, are there things you wish you had done differently, you know, planned or implemented differently to have better responded to the situation? You're on mute. Can you unmute yourself? One thing, yeah. one thing which I would like to share is, you know, uh, not every NGO is having core programming into healthcare. And this time, uh, we realized, you know, that no matter what program we are doing, but to, it's very, very important to integrate healthcare into all our developmental programs because that's a basic to survival and then a healthy person can do anything else, you know. So, Absolutely. And we all are realizing the value of healthcare workers, you know. Uh, generally, it, uh, we don't think of them so much, but yeah, it's all about them, you know. They are the ones and putting their life at stake, yeah. Yes, Adhik, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so my thing is uh, we have to start living in mini in minimum now because uh, uh, and give maximum whatever we can actually because the problem is not only in one place, it's all everywhere. So we cannot basically expect that uh, donation will come from this country or that place or someone will give because the person, people who are or, or, or corporates or organizations who are supporting throughout so many years to all of us, basically... Uh, uh, even the, uh, in that area also the same problem is happening. They are also going through the same problem. So it is, it is not basically to asking them uh, that, uh, so we, what we have to do, whatever resources we are having, whatever the goodwill we are already creating, you know, uh, holding since so many years. So on that basis, whatever we are receiving, we have to, we have to you know, start supporting, starting already, so everyone is supporting. But I think in a larger scale, big players, big organizations, or maybe, maybe government only need to come and, uh, you know, they have, to do something on this because on small level we can only you know we are on small level we can become a partner to this big organization for big uh, government or, or government plans but on so on and so that we can on small smaller level we can reach to people because we are having that access but ultimately uh, you know asking the uh, uh, donations to corporates asking donation to the bigger foundations i think they are also having the same pressure so, uh, because they, uh, this this problem is everywhere this problem is not just in one place. So I think uh, we have to be a little, uh, uh, you know, we have to take so things uh, easy and also uh, consciously we have to, you know, uh, make a call for, for even donation because I think, uh, I think this problem is everyone is facing and we have to basically start living in the minimum and whatever we can because they are, right now survival is very, very important. Uh, other things we'll, we'll see later, but, but survival, we have to make ourselves survive and also the other people survive. So mm -hmm. I think this is the basic thing we have to, we have to start learning. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to, I would love, I would really like each one of you speakers to um, share this one piece of advice to motivate the attendees to take up similar initiatives for the current or future situations. So, um, let me just go with Prafulji. Prafulji, up unmuted hai. Prafulji, up up ne unmute karenge. Can somebody unmute Prafulji, please? Govind. Haji, namaskar. Namaskar. So, ye puchna saate hai. Ek advice dije, jo attendees hai, aur sabko, sab soch rahe, think kar rahe, ke Unko ek one piece of advice to motivate karne ke liye, unko na utsa badhane ke liye, ke wo is tarah ke kya kare, kis tarah ke initiatives ab isme bhi abhi jab ho raha hai ya aage baad aati hai, riots hoti hai, tab karke initiatives lene padte ho. To kya ek ek advice ab kya dena chahenge? Ek to ye hai ki itne time lockdown bhot jada samay se bad gaya hai, to sab mansik rup se astir ho gaye hain. सबको परेशानी है कि आपका बिजनेस का क्या होगा अभ्यास का क्या होगा वो इसके लिए सभी को कुछ ना कुछ करना चाहिए जैसे कि कोई अच्छी अच्छी बातें मोटिवेशन के लिए होए तो सब सबका आत्मविश्वास बढ़ जाए कोरोना के बाद का 
क्योंकि ये ज्यादा टाइम तो नहीं रहने वाला फिर भी जब वहां से निकले तब कुछ होना चाहिए दूसरी बात जो लोग बहुत आप म्यूट कैन समबडी अनम्यूट प्लीज हां ये सबको सोचना चाहिए कि आप, वो आर्थिक रूप से आप या आपकी दूसरी बात नहीं सुनाई दी फिर से बोलेंगे हां जो लोग आर्थिक रूप से टूट गए हैं और परेशान हो गए हैं इनको आगे बढ़ाने के लिए हम क्या कर सकते हैं ये हमें सोचना चाहिए ये बात कर बहुत बढ़िया के I'm just going in the order of our opponent to present the presenters. So, Anshu, what is that one piece of advice you would give to motivate the attendees to take up initiative? Uh, so, uh, I am saying that it is still an old day. Joblessness and the problems are all there. We need to understand. Yes, it okay. Now, 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 now. Others can mute the speakers. There is a gentleman. No, 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 that is part. Yeah, there is a gentleman, Motilal Gupta. You know, he's unmuting himself. You know, that's what the sound. You can't mute his line. No, his line is muted. I, I just muted it. Okay, so great. He unmutes it. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. So I'm saying that I'm just saying that this disaster is still unfolding, and more than the virus, it will be the the joblessness, the migration, the rural distress. and it is this in india this is like literally followed by the peak heat which is drought and we lost your order. and the then the rain rainy season which is normal pattern so we have to be we have to be on it fine and we need to say that as much as we can uh, come out you know it's is not a disaster which can be tackled like earlier disaster that i give 1000 rupees and it can be tackled no i would say that this is a time to really give back as much as possible not give back rather pay back to be honest you know to the to the nations to the people uh, through the organization directly whatever way and especially the smaller uh, places but mai sirf uh, the only thing which i want to say is that unlike any other previous disaster we have to uh, make our efforts 100x then only this can be uh, tackled i mean at gunj we have seen it that how there is acute shortage of money not because the money is not there but because the scale of the disaster is really really huge because every other person is really affected you know thank you that's why you need to when the when the people are in need are are multiplied people who can take care of it also needs to really multiply in the same proportion then only we can handle it that's it thank you thank you so before i go to the next speaker may i just in lieu of the time can i get brief answers please ha huh? so uh, uh, that anaka what are your thoughts what a piece of advice anaka left i think actually anaka had to go to the hospital she had to send her oh. apologies yeah nilima ji uh, uh, have advice for the attendees you are muted ha huh? okay okay that's fine madhu what about you so i would say this is a very long drawn out battle that we are facing it's not something like the other disaster that's going to go away very quickly the scale is huge so i think we need all hands on the deck and everybody to do whatever little bit they can uh, because you know the need is so vast so to each whatever to the extent that you can do help out maybe in your own community maybe take care of the immediate people who work for you because this is going to be a very i mean the rehab phase as we say in a disaster and we haven't seen it playing out still i mean i think we are going to see the uh, the health issue becoming much more they may they may be able to break it uh, but i think the containment is going to take a long time and then all the uh, you know the misery it has caused that is going to continue for a very very long time so i think everybody needs to open up their hearts thing and i do think that we need uh, you know money is going into as anju said to certain government organizations it really needs money to percolate to the grassroots because that's where the real work is being done okay you know i'm sorry i'm again changing the thing because i'm keeping the time in mind so let's move to the questions that have been posted by um the attendees and so i will address this to the next aditi what is the availability of covid testing in india are any of the ngos able to help people access covid testing 
Uh, COVID testing, uh, like everyone has already said, we've not had great testing happening. Uh, we've got some kids that have come in from China now, so testing is happening a little more. But it's basically people who are affected and people down their line who are being tested. So that's all that's happening, and I don't think NGOs are, help, uh, are being able to allowed to help in the testing. Oh, no. So the next question is, COVID-19 has devastated the entire world. People are scared and unsecured. Insecure, sorry, having psychological repercussions. And are any of you doing anything to provide psychological and mental soothing to your known and unknown people? So, can I address this to Adhik, please? Adhik? Adhik. I think he's, so, he's unmuted. Can, can I answer that a bit? Yes. Can I answer that? Okay. okay. Sure. Okay. So uh, what we have tried to do is to reach out to everyone, especially children and older people through phones and things like that, connect with them, talk to them, make sure they're feeling okay, uh, make sure about, uh, you know, so that their mental health issues are, um, and they're not so worried about what is happening, giving them information, talking to them about it. Also with children, if you do activities uh, online and things like that, little photos that they can put on their uh, phones and things like that, it works a lot, you know, just to connect and be able to talk to each other. Wow, great advice. So, I think, I think any NGO that's providing psychological and mental so, uh, therapy to, uh, uh, to people in general? So, so what we are doing at HealthAge is that we I, have a nice... Can I... Uh, sorry, uh, this question was for Adhik. Ah. No, I'm not able to hear it. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. So, do you know of any NGOs? Uh, I think this, uh, it's not very clear. Can you hear us? It's freezing. So, we'll come back to him. Uh, any, uh, uh, Aditi, you want to tell us? There's an organization called Nimhans. Um, and they work specifically on uh, mental health issues. They have a free um, online number that you can call in India. It's 1-800-112-545. Huh? Thank you. Adik, I, 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 do you want to log back um, again? Stay. Stay. Uh, I'm too yeah. Can I say something? I'm Rihanna Riyawala from SEVA, Self-Employed Women's Association. Uh, Rihanna, yes, we would love to hear from you. Can you post your question in the chat box? I just want, to, we want this, everybody to have the same opportunity. That's the only reason. So yeah, post it in the chat box, please. Yeah, it's not a question, but then I want to answer your question and share our experiences on working in this area. Yeah, please go ahead, but let's be brief. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, so I'm uh, Rihanna Riyavala from Self-Employed Women's Association and we have been organizing 1.7 billion poor women workers across uh, say 18 states in India. And uh, like uh, 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 talking about our uh, uh, work under COVID-19, we have been working quite uh, closely with the community members so, uh, because we have a, uh, quite a lot of grassroots reach and uh, from the day one we have started with the situation analysis and we have organized daily calls with the district and state coordinators and look at what are the situations of the community members and we have started with a lot of awareness education among the membership uh, uh, in say um, lakhs of members across india through various platforms like uh, it has been through whatsapp kaizala because many of our members do have say access to android uh, mobile or if they don't they do not have uh, android mobile then we also uh, uh, like uh, awareness and education through voice messages as well so like this was with reference to say covid 19 symptoms and what are the modes of transmissions then precautions against uh, the coronavirus infection, importance of social distancing, long-term measures to boost immunity and all. And like, uh, as you are asking that, what are the, uh, say, psychological or say mental health issue? So we need to understand from our members through mobile, uh, like by calling them or say the leader who are in the villages itself, they 
like visited with the guidelines uh, that uh, what are the uh, uh, what are the uh, say situations they are facing so like we are also working on uh, how do we work on the mental health issues and counseling for the members who have gone into depression like how do we deal with stress and panic and fear and anxieties how do we minimize say domestic abuse and violence because many of us shared that um, the livelihood majority of these workers are daily wage earners and because they have lost their li livelihood a lot of issues related to that uh, are also like uh, experienced and so we also work on how do we educate them and then we also work with the children yes, we, when, you know, like, we are limited for time but thank you so much for sharing thank you so much huh. so uh, i know everybody uh, uh, here in the us it's very late and in india everybody's very busy so thank you i want to move to the last segment and like yeah, so pretty busy we are working for the weekends and everything so yeah, i need totally, to also jump onto another totally. we will wrap up very soon i guess yeah. so um when we sent out the email announcement we asked the ica community if they want to share about any efforts going on so uh, i will briefly go through that and uh, so there are um eight different ica ngos who reported and uh, uh one of them is BSKB Association. I, I believe you all can see my screen, right? <laughs> and so uh, on the screen, I mean, everybody has their own mission, which they have been focusing for, which they started the NGO and been doing it for years. That's I mean, but every, but then several have pivoted to address the COVID. So uh, this association is contributing to the PM Care Fund and taking care of daily wage. Uh, workers, their ration requirements, they're providing financial assistance. So that's commendable. The other one is India Nirman Sangh, which is, uh, these are ICA organizations, and they're distributing essentials to poor women and producing masks. Uh, Language and Learning Foundation, they are collaborating with state governments to implement online courses for the teachers, uh, so that, you know, uh, the, uh, and, and of course the students, so that the, uh, the academic uh, achievement doesn't get left behind. Uh, move the wheel. They are sending water tankers and distributing money to uh, families for basic to cover basic necessity. Yeah. Parivar Foundation. Uh, they are coordinating with government officials and the villagers to ensure that um, all that all uh, that food and everything reaches uh, them, and they're dispersing money to older women in surrounding areas and providing regular updates about the emerging situation. People Science Institute, they are uh, providing rations to distressed families, creating awareness on distancing, social distancing and sanitation, distributing masks and raising money. Saidha, they are cooking and distributing food packets and masks uh, and other uh, uh, PPE uh, items. Uttham, is uh, they're raising awareness, basically education at different levels, at panchayats and a central and state government, education, educating uh, people and uh, providing food baskets. Then we have four ICA partners who reported, one of Anutip, they are doing 3D printing of prosthetics and uh, providing uh, personal protective equipment to caregivers. Freedom English Academy, they're providing uh, daily meals to students and families. They're funding the staff at teachers at, at centers to replicate the efforts by providing daily cooked meals from the kitchens. Home of Hope, and I know Nilima Sabal was here, so uh, it's this project. They are having food drive with Koshish Slum Project in Delhi and Mijwan Village, uh, uh, distributing money and promoting the concept of Karuna and its impact on society during this coronavirus. So Karma Foundation, Maya is here. Uh, They're distributing food, hygiene products and essentials to immigrants in remote areas. And they're also uh, making direct deposit of cash to, to, for families. Then uh, there are three who are not ICA um, NGOs or partners, but they also uh, wanted us to, want to, they shared with us. Uh, this one is Enfold Proactive Health Trust. They're providing guidance document on how to protect children in childcare institutions in the context of COVID-19, which is quite unique. Uh, San Jose Gurudwara, where they're delivering 
lunch and food packages to the police station and they've set up a hotline. And the last one is Sri Hanuman Prashad Poddar Andh Vidyale, where the school has been converted to storage and distribution of dry ration. And they're distributing uh, food packages ev everywhere. So um, really appreciate all that is being done by uh, all of you. Uh, the, not, the speakers, absolutely tremendous work and uh, really heartfelt thank you for sharing everything. I, I'm, I'm sure I have been very muted. I've learned so much and I'm sure you all have learned and the attendees, there's been so much sharing of information. So thank you again. And I will hand over to Govind Desale, who is, uh, uh, sorry, Govind Desale, who is uh, the project chair. Thank you. Thank you, Anju. Uh, all these speakers are very inspirational. They are doing such a tough job on the front line on the coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic. And I hope in this call, all the leaders of NGOs, they benefited from each other's work uh, related to their challenges and also the solutions implemented. On behalf of Indians for Collective Action, I want to extend our sincere thanks to all of the speakers and attendees from different geographies and different time zones. And last of all, I want to thank Dr. Anju Sai for doing such a superb job of conducting this conversation. And also our fearless leader, Reshma Nigam, for leading this ICA team. And I can't forget thanking to all these ICA volunteers as well. The recording of this webinar will be available on our website within next 24 hours. Please wanted to request one thing. Please don't forget to donate to the Indians for Collective Action NGOs of your choice using the donate button of your, uh, on our ICA website, which is called icaonline.org. And just remember, ICA sends 100% of the donations to the selected NGOs. ICA does not take any cost for the administration or wire transfers. Again, thanks everyone for joining this webinar.